So this is basically the login screen of RTM. You input your username and your password. And then we go and log in. To make RTM as versatile as possible, we have developed integrations to all kinds of user management solutions that already exist. Among these are Azure Active Directory and all kinds of LDAP systems. And we are continuously developing more and more integrations as needed. This means that you can basically synchronize users, groups and or group memberships from these different kinds of user directories and then use that existing information within RTM. RTM can also be configured with pass-through authentication. This means that you can, for example, use Azure AD's single sign-on capabilities. Basically, what RTM is, a system that is built on top of LDAP server. So it integrates with all systems that integrate with LDAP, which is virtually pretty much every tool out there. Besides being an LDAP server, we have built a couple of more features on top of that. First of all, we built a REST API so that you can actually manage the users using an API. In addition to that, we built a front end. And that means basically that all the things that are done in RTM are actually calls to the REST API, which means that whatever is done in here can also be automated via the REST API. In addition to normal LDAP behavior, we have added some spice on top of it all. So first of all, we have users, as we can see in this view right here. We have different levels of users. We've got system administrators, administrators, and normal users. System administrators have basically access to everything, while administrators are limited to administrating users, groups, and bots. Normal users are, as you might imagine, normal users. When we are searching for users, there are different ways of filtering them in the UI. We can filter them by their status, so whether they're active, meaning that their account is active and they can log in, inactive, meaning that their accounts have been deactivated and they are no longer able to log in, as well as locked. And locked basically means that they have tried to log in too many times with the wrong password within a certain amount of time, which is of course configurable. So effectively, we are stopping brute force attacks with this. In addition to that, we can also filter users based on their role or user type, which means we can list system administrators, we can list administrators, and of course, users. All of these results are paged, so we can alter the amount of results we have per page, and of course then via that alter the amount of pages that we have to scroll through. Each of the users have their details in here, which can be edited in the UI. Their role can be altered as well as their details. And the details themselves are actually configurable so that, for example, a normal user might be configured not to be able to alter their username. In here, we can also see all of the groups that a certain user is part of. We can also see all the bots that a certain user is part of. More on that a bit later. In addition to users, we also have groups. And groups are, as you know, groups of users. The idea here is that you basically have groups for specific purposes. For example, developers for a specific project or project managers for a specific project or read-only users for a specific project. This means that when you have a lot of tools and you basically give the groups the correct permissions in these tools, the only thing you need to do is add a user into a group to give that user access to all of the resources that, for example, a certain uh, project might have. Within groups, we have, of course, group details that you can edit. These are also configurable in a way that not just any user can, for example, edit the group name. A group has a list of users that are a part of that group. And in addition to that, all of the users within a group actually also have a role in that group. So for example, in this case, we have this test name user, 
which we can see here is actually a system administrator. But in addition to that, he has a role in this group, which we can change using this view. Now the idea behind this is that if we had a user in this group and we wanted this specific user to be able to manage this group, even though they were a normal user, we could simply promote them to be a group administrator. This means that, for example, a project manager can be a group administrator and they care that all of the uh, actual developers, business users, consultants, and so forth have access to that specific project's resources. This means that there doesn't have to be a long delay when you ask for specific access from IT, but you can actually handle the permissions yourself right here in RTM. We also have kind of a mix between these two, which are bots. So these are basically technical user accounts, which you can use within a team to automate different kinds of tasks. A bot is a user which also has users and groups as its members. For example, if we were to create a bot here, we could now edit this bot and see who are actually members of this bot. So we could now add more users to this bot to make sure that all of the people who need to have access to the technical account actually have it. And the purpose of this is to prevent people in general from using their own usernames and passwords in different kinds of automation tasks. This is a bad practice because not only is it insecure, since other people can take your password and username and do something with them, but that also means that when that person changes their password, or changes jobs or roles within uh, your company. These automation tasks may then stop working. So for example, if you have a production deployment, which is using a certain user's username and password to perform the deployment, when that user changes their password, that deployment stops working. Uh, the idea behind having uh, users in a bot is uh, that we have the credentials here centralized in RTM and whoever is a member of this specific group can actually come in here and check out the credentials for the bot so they can see the bot username and they can see the bot's password in here. It does not have to be specifically documented anywhere else. And as with groups, with bots we also have different kinds of roles for users within this bot. So once again, we might have a project manager, for example, who would be a bot administrator, which would allow them to actually manage who is a member of this bot and who can see its credentials. And of course, then also change those credentials. The bots can of course be filtered in the very same way as we can filter the users. So we can check out private bots, public bots, bots by status, and so forth. Furthermore, we have a feature that is the audit log. So basically all the actions that users take here within RTM are logged in the system administrator accessible access log, which basically shows who has done at which time to which member and from which IP address the call has come from. And this gives us an audit trail when investigating what has happened in specific systems. Thank you for watching. For more information on Ethico Group team management, check out www.ethicogroup.com.